Hi, this is Sanjay Mukhopadhyay. I'm a, a staff pathologist at the Cleveland Clinic in the Department of Pathology. Um, and I do lung pathology primarily, um, and also frozen section pathology. I'm also the director of the frozen section service. Today, I'm going to show you a, a very interesting case of interstitial lung disease that actually came through our consultation service uh, with, a, with a question that was more related to tumor, but it, the um, interpretation t turned everything around. So here is the whole scanned um, image from that case. So you can see this is some sort of a resection specimen, either a wedge resection or a lobectomy, and you can see a small nodular lesion in there. So the pathologist who sent us the case saw this nodular lesion and was wondering what this was. So I'm going to show you a little bit higher mag of this lesion. And you can see that there's a lot of fibrosis in here, a lot of scar tissue. And if you back up a little bit, you'll see that the edges of the scar are a bit irregular. Now what uh, bothered the pathologist was that in addition to fibrosis and some degree of chronic inflammation in here, there were also epithelial cells that looked quite atypical. And I, I will agree that these, a, a, these uh, cells that are atypical are at the edge of this lesion. But I couldn't quite get to cancer here. I couldn't quite get to adenocarcinoma. And in fact, the background of the lung uh, suggested a different diagnosis. So if you back up again and see that you have a stellate looking scar with some chronic inflammation mixed, and then in the background, there is abnormal lung. So as we get to the edge of the tissue, you see another smaller scar here. So again, I call it a scar because there's fibrosis that's distorting the architecture of the lung in this particular sample. Now, if I take it to, to extreme low magnification, you can see that these scars are very tiny. They're millimeter size or maybe even less than that. So that's our first clue. We've got a stellate scar and then a second section from the same specimen um, is, is shown here. So you see at the bottom of the lung is pretty normal except for, for some respiratory bronchiolitis, I'll show you at higher magnification. But the subpleural area of the lung is quite abnormal. So here's the subpleural area of the lung, clearly emphysematous. So there's emphysema here. Let me show you that at a little higher magnification. So there's emphysema. The um, alveolar spaces are greatly enlarged. They're floating off alveolar septa that are frequently seen in emphysematous lung. And in addition to that, you've got this ropey, hyalinized collagen within the alveolar septa that's known as smoking-related interstitial fibrosis, or SRIF. So just from this finding alone, without any other history, I know that this patient is a cigarette smoker. And I know that his lungs are both emphysematous and are fibrotic because of the cigarette smoking. So we, we have already established that this patient has smoking-related changes in the background lung. And as we go to the high magnification, we see in other areas of the lung, there are pigmented macrophages within the alveoli, as you would expect in a case of SRIF. So this finding is known as respiratory bronchiolitis. So with the, just these two images, we've established that this patient is a smoker, and he has stellate scars and a, in a background of smoking-related interstitial fibrosis. So what else could we do to further narrow down this diagnosis. Here's a third section from this case. And again, it shows the same kind of stellate scars. And as you look within the scars, there's not much really specific. There's a lymphoid aggregate here. There's fibrosis here. There are a few pigmented macrophages, but really nothing diagnostic. The diagnostic finding is really in this tiny nodular stellate scar. And again, it's a a uh, lesion that's distorting the architecture, and the edges are not just completely round, they're a bit irregular, which is where the term stellate comes from, or stellate or scar-like. So as you go within this stellate lesion, you see the same atypical looking pneumocytes at the edge of the lesion. Let me show you at a higher magnification. But these pneumocytes are actually reactive, and in this particular lesion, reactive pneumocytes at the edge of the lesion are very common. The diagnostic part is as you come into the cellular part of the, of the lesion, you see this mix of plasma cells, lymphocytes, chronic inflammatory cells, but also lots of eosinophils. So let me take it to as high magnification as I can. And here you can see both the entrapped reactive alveolar pneumocytes that are up here, reactive alveolar pneumocytes that are up here, and then inflammatory cells that include large numbers of eosinophils, as well as some histiocyte-like cells that give you a clue that these histiocyte-like cells might be Langerhans cells. And indeed, when we did a CD1A and S100 um, 
immunostaining on this case, we could prove that these cells that were mixed in with the eosinophils and the other inflammatory cells were Langerhans cells. Another thing that happens in these scars is that smokers' macrophages that are usually within the alveolar spaces get uh, accumulated within the scarred areas. And so this whole lesion is actually a cellular nodule of Langerhans cell histiocytosis. So if you come back to the original nodule that the pathologist was worried about, this is actually the scarred phase of Langerhans cell histiocytosis. And Langerhans cell histiocytosis, as you know, in the lung is seen exclusively or nearly exclusively in cigarette smokers. And in these patients, you get nodular lesions in addition to SRIF and respiratory bronchiolitis in the background lung. You get these tiny nodules or scars that are filled with Langerhans cells and with other inflammatory cells. But what happens in the scarred phase of this disease is that the inflammatory cells start to go away and the Langerhans cells start to disappear and it becomes just a totally scarred form of interstitial lung disease. And at that point, it can be mistaken for many other things. It can be mistaken for scars. It can be mistaken for usual interstitial pneumonia. So the clue is at low magnification, the stellate um, appearance of the disease and also the other smoking related changes in the background lung such as smoking related interstitial fibrosis. So we know in this case this is not cancer, it's benign and we also know to tell the patient you need to stop cigarette smoking. I hope you enjoyed this case. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>